ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. The inaugural IAAF World Relays took center stage this past weekend at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. And as Kelsey Johnson tells us tonight, Sports Minister Dr. Daniel Johnson is calling the two-day event a smashing success. The curtains came down on the World Relays Sunday and the more than 800 athletes that participated in the historic event left for their respective homes Monday with a lasting impression. Not only did they compete in the historical event but got a taste of the Bahamas. Those watching from home were also able to see the country and all its splendor. Three world records in one weekend in one beautiful place, the Bahamas, seen on 150 news agencies and channels worldwide on every continent, Africa, Asia, Europe, America, South America, all through the Caribbean, Australia. This is the first time, folks, that the Bahamas has been really on the world stage and we performed fabulously well. What better way to officially launch sports in paradise than this weekend? Having three world and 37 national records ran on the fastest track in the world right here in the Bahamas. For those who would have meddled, um, there are um, rewards that are already in, in place. I think that'll happen. They'll receive that later this week. Um, for those who uh, performed at the highest level, um, they, there are prizes that are paid for by uh, the Bahamas government. Um, and you'll, they'll receive that this week. It is $50,000 first place, $30,000 second place, $20,000 third place, and it goes right down the line. Every single team in the final gets something. Um, and so that, I think that's a pretty impressive thing to do at this level. The people in the government of the Bahamas are the ones who provided the entire package of incentive for this entire event, um, just so people know. Um, and of course the world records, uh, thank God, paid for by the IAAF. The world relays was used as a qualifier for the world championships set for next year in Beijing, People's Republic of China. Kelsey Johnson, ZNS Total Sports. Now one of the marquee events at the inaugural World Relays was the men's 4x4 relay and that one really lived up to its billing. Team USA nipping the Bahamas at the line to win gold in 257.25. I ran last year at the Fireman Chris Brown Invitational <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to come back here and well we wanted to come back and I perform well. Uh, great crowd, you know, great stadium. I would, I, I'm not usually the one who talks about like a fast track kind of deal because I feel like if you run fast, the track is fast, but I felt like that was a great track. It was like some, some good grip, uh, nice tight track. So we wanted to come out and get the W and that's what we did. You know, come out here, compete on this level. You got to always bring your A game. Um, I think today was just a statement, um, you know, coming out and competing hard and, and these guys actually come out being competitive with the USA. It definitely, and that's coming out with W definitely lets us know that we got to go back home and work harder and prepare our minds and our bodies for next year for this tough competition to happen all over again. Here they come down the stretch. After leading most of the race, our man's 4x4 team finishing with the silver medal at the World Relays, crossing the line in 257.59, just over three tenths of a second behind Team USA. To come home here and um, actually have the home crowd support, you know, it's a great feeling. Um, just to come out to the gate and hear the, the crowd scream like that for us, you know, it's, it's an amazing feeling. and. Um, you know, words can't even explain how sweet it is and make the hair on your head stand up and give you goosebumps all over the body. I mean, to have the fans behind our backs is always a good thing. But as of any competition, you know, it's always, it's always people who are going to be cheering. You don't know who for, but you hear the crowd. Once you hear the crowd, you're going to go. So um, the only advantage of us is just knowing that we was home. So we just want to give God thanks for helping us to finish the race healthy. The lineup team Bahamas ran in the men's 4x4 final at the World Relays was a bit different from the preliminaries and the London Olympics as Ramon Miller was out with an injury. Latoy Williams was inserted to be Miller's replacement and he was thrown right into the action on the opening leg after only finding out that he was going to run during warm-ups. The first thing went through my mind is, Lord, please don't let me lock up in the front of the Bahamas people. <laughs> That's the first thing that gone through my head. <laughs> I can't lie about that. I was like, monkey told you. <laughs> I can't lock up in the front of these people. Yeah. So I just went out there and 
did what I had to do as the fifth man, keep yeah. them in the race or bring yeah. them in the race good. Yeah. Yeah. So I just did my best that I can do. Former Sports Minister Algernon Allen was one of the thousands of Bahamians in attendance on both days of the relays. And while he was impressed with what took place, he thinks even more needs to be done in order for Team Bahamas to keep up with the rest of the world. The next area of funding that we have to employ is to identify in the islands of the Bahamas, throughout these islands, some of the very talented young Bahamians, men and women, who I'm sure is given the opportunity using the Jamaican model, you know we need not reinvent the wheel. Jamaica employs a program whereby they provide academic and other subsistence allowance for a cadre of local athletes and they train them locally. We have the College of the Bahamas and it has university status. So we can employ that very same program and we can benefit enormously because I believe that we have many uh, Pauline Davises, many firemen, firemen brown around the length and breadth of the islands of the Bahamas. Now to go along with the World Relays, another huge milestone in the regional sports arena was also taking place right here on our shores over the weekend. We get that story tonight from Julian Gibson. Journalists from around the Caribbean have all come together to further promote athletes in the region. The historical launch of Caribbean Sports Journalists Association, CASJA, took place right here on Sunday with the full support of the IAAF. Over the years, we have been speaking about bringing the sports media in the Caribbean together. We have had many challenges and we saw it necessary of recent with all the challenges we have faced to um, unite the sports media. And when we speak of the sports media, we're not speaking just of the broadcasters, the writers. We also involve the photographers, videographers, the um, columnists. You know, the producers, the editors, just name it. People who are involved in the sports media because somewhere or the other, uh, they influence what is the final output. Two leading sports journalists in the country were also honored this past weekend. Mr. Um, Godfrey Brown. Brown. Um, going by the name of Goofy and Mr. Kirk Smith and we had the the um, opportunity of having Mr. Lamin Diak make the presentation the presentations I should say on our behalf we saw it fit to start Kasja on that mode because we think we need to recognize and uh, what a better way of not just launching in the Bahamas but also making the first um, um, set of recognition in terms of a presentation to those who would have blazed the trail in the Bahamas. And we are hoping to emulate that in other parts of the region. Reporting for ZNS Total Sports, I am Julian Gibson. And that will do it for sports. Don't go anywhere. There's more to come after the break. This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center.